if your father was here, sitting here across from you, um, what's something that you would tell him? Well, I would ask him, do he, does he love me? When they say you're supreme, that means that you're the most high. Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing bigger than you. You're mm -hmm. the best. You're the greatest. That name is just so powerful. I was a, a baseball player. I went to private school. My mother had me in the... I was wearing Gucci loafers to school in second grade, bro. Like, it was different. Because I didn't have no father figure. You get what I'm saying? All the men in my family was in jail. You can't see yourself supporting anything for these said does. Why is that? Because I would... Like, he's... He's a... He's an enemy. The infamous picture, the picture that broke the internet. Mm -hmm. I don't like him at all. I don't like nothing about him. I don't like how he moves. I don't like his smile. I don't like how he talk. I don't like how he dresses. I don't like nothing about that kid. What's good? My name is Chris Dallas. It's Trapping Anonymous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Special edition of 100%. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody that's been supporting us. And um, this, this series has just been blowing up in a positive way for us. So I'm just very, very happy. I'm very excited. And I just want to keep this content coming to you. Uh, the person I have for you today um, really needs no introduction. I am just, uh, I, I'm stoked. I'm stoked because this is re represents exactly what Travel Anonymous is about. It's, it's, it represents what 100% is about. And it's the, it's the real stories. It's the streets. We This is where we come from. I feel like this is in a real big industry podcast. And, you know, before we get caught up in the hoopla, I just want to get uh, keep it to as authentic as we can. And do remember that the stories that you hear do not necessarily reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, or keep your little homie off the streets. It's only entertainment. Please don't get me indicted. My name is Chris Dabbs. Let's get it. What's up, man? Yo, I love yo, I love that last that last call. <laughs> don't get me indicted. Don't get me indicted, man. I it's love a... that one. I need to get I need to get I'm I'm yo, if I make merch like that, like are you going one of percentage of that? Cause I'm about to bring some shirts out. Please don't get me indicted. You, know, you always got something that you up to, so as long as long as you cut me in a little bit, then um I I think I think that's something that we can uh we can think about. Oh. Thanks for having me, though, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that we was able to make this. Feel me? Glad we was able to link, man. Connect, do anything. I always think it's interesting to see the second generation of these illustrious crime figures, right? I grew up watching American Greed. I grew up watching. I, I, I love, I love, crank. I love crime. I love gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? I hate, I hate that. I think everybody has like a everybody has an infatuation with it. I don't know why why do we love mob bosses, crime figures? Why do we They just they just different. Like growing up, like you know, you can watch a cartoon, but a cartoon you know is not real. Mm. When you when you when you get those mob stories and you seeing the mob and you seeing the drug dealers, you seeing the gangsters, like you get the glitz, you get the glam, you get the, the money, you get the girls, you get the cars, yeah, the way they dress. You just enamored by that shit because mm -hmm. like you, you might never get to that level, but mm -hmm. as long as you can watch somebody doing it, mm -hmm. you always have that motivation to to be great. It almost feels like we don't see ourselves becoming doctors and lawyers. Like that's not really attainable. A basketball player, maybe a rapper, possibly, but a, a, a street dealer, as a street a street nigga, a thug. You know what I'm saying? Those are the people we grew up with. Those are the people that we grown to love and. We all know somebody that was, you know, kind of doing those things, and I don't know. It's just like a. It's like because it's like you're watching a real movie. But here we are with the second generation, though. Uh, Supreme McGriff Jr. Mm -hmm. I mean. That's powerful. That name alone is powerful. Yeah. Just Supreme. That name Supreme, like Supreme, like when when they say you Supreme, that means that you're the most high. Like mm -hmm. nothing bigger than you. You're mm -hmm. the best. You're the greatest. That name is just so powerful. In light of all of the shows that's been coming out right now, I mean, I've been, I've been, ta I, I've been tapped into the BMF. I don't know, I, I like it. It, it. It's, it's a good show. It's a good show. Um, what do you think about that? What do, what do you think about that? I mean, if I feel like if you got a good story and if your story is authentic and your story is, 
if it was big before it came to TV, it's easy to make it a big TV show. Like, if you got a, a machine behind it, it, it's not going to be hard to sell a real story. The story was already big, so it's not hard to sell it. Have you seen the show yet? No, never no. watched it. You think you ever will? No. Why is that? I just, for what? I mean, I don't, if I have a, if, it, if it's like a dilemma that I have or issue that I have with a person, it's going to be that way forever. I'm never going to support anything they do. I'm never going to, my one view, everybody, when I tell people that, oh, he don't care about your one view. Okay, well, I don't care about it either. I'm not going to watch it. Right. My one view is important to me. Um, are you aware that Little Meech plays Big Meech? Yeah, you know? I, yeah, I know that, yeah. Is that something you would do? Um, yeah, I would. I would. I'd definitely play my pops. I feel like that'd be fire. Huh. And I feel like nobody don't know him how I know him, because I'm him. So how can somebody know him better than me? What's, what's one thing you say, would you say about yourself? When you make that statement, nobody knows him like I know him. What's one thing about you and him that you know that nobody else knows? That how like we both have similarities in, or it could be anything. Like with, I mean, I feel like we both think we just the best at everything. We just have that aura and that charisma, like nobody better than us. Whatever we do, we gonna be the best at it. Whether we work at Starbucks, whether we selling clothes, whether we we gonna be the best. And not to keep. Drawing comparisons between you and little little Meech, mm -hmm. and but I, it's just it's just such a big thing right now, um, especially with the shows. I was watching an interview with little Meech. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, he didn't grow up in the streets. He didn't he didn't he didn't have to you know what I'm saying get it get it like his pops had to get it and this that, and the third because realistically the goal is to get your family out of the streets. Absolutely. So if you've done that, I mean, you've accomplished in some sort of some sort of way. So was that like that for you? Were you out of the streets? Did you have to grow up in the streets? Absolutely not. I was a, a baseball player. I went to private school. My mother had me in the... I was wearing Gucci loafers to school in second grade, bro. Like, it was different. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, that, but, but that had nothing to do with my pop's bread or none of that. Right. That was all mama love. Mama mm -hmm. love provided... I was driving to school in Range Rovers, Mercedes Benz. Oh, that was all my mother. So I was like, but you know, when you have that in you, when you come from that cloth, you no matter how far away you are from it, you always gonna come back to who you are and what you and what you know what's in your DNA. So I could have been in Alaska somewhere. I was always gonna find my way back to Southside or back to, you know, just that that environment of you know the streets. That's just what it is. Wow. Um, like a magnet almost. Yeah, and it's like you growing up hearing all of these things about your father and then here you are, the prodigy, the son. Um, you hearing these things, you didn't have to live these things. You didn't have to live this out. What was that like for you growing up? What was the first age you realized who you were or who your father was? 12, like 11 or 12. Wow. But it didn't, it didn't like hit me until I was like, 15, 16, and then I just wanted to, all those stories I kept hearing from that, from 11 to 15 or 16, I'm like, yo, like, I want to be him, like, I want to, I want to see, like, I want to test the waters, like, I want to do some shit, like, okay. I got, I got some big shoes to fill, and I want to fill them. Wow. So, so, when you're asking your mother growing up, well, where's my father? I never, I never, I never asked her. I never, you I, never wondered. I never. I mean, like normally, kids ask about their father when they lacking something. I had a great support system, so I wasn't really lacking anything. So I never asked. I never really asked because I wasn't lacking nothing. Right. Wow. Um. You you weren't lacking. So, so that ne it never dawned on you. But you would hear stories though. All the time, I would go to the barber shop and. Dudes would be like, yo, that's, that's, yo, that's Queens. Like, you keep hearing the whispers. But Are you not... in Queens at this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've always lived in Queens, but I didn't go to school in Queens. Okay. But I always would go to the barbershop, stuff like that. People would come up to me, they see me in the supermarket, barbershop, give me money. Yo, you look like your pops. And I'm, you know, I'm a kid. I'm not worried about it. I'm just happy I'm getting that money. Like, yeah, <laughs> give me that money. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> but, but yeah, I always used to hear the whispers. And then one day I finally went to my mother. I'm like, yo, mom, why everybody keep telling me I look like somebody? Like, who is this person they talking about? So she called my aunt, you feel me, and they sat me down and they told me what it was. 
This is at 15 or 16? This was like, no, this was like 11, 12 okay. when I first found out. Yep. But around this time, I believe that, uh, I think American Gangster, the TV show on BT, I mm -hmm. think that was on. Mm -hmm. And then they showed me his episode and then like, it started unraveling. And then I'm like, oh, okay, hmm. And it was the same, around the same time as his trial too. Mm -hmm. He was on trial around that time too. Like, so all that shit was happening like back to back to back. So when he started his trial, he called a couple dudes from the P's and he like, yo, like I want y'all to go get my son. Like I don't want him up under his mother like that. Like, you know, he need to see and like get privy to what's going on in the real world. So that's when I started coming outside a little bit, but I still had a leash on me. But when the leash came off, it was like the floodgate just opened up quick. So he never contacted you during all of that time? Yeah, I spoke to him a lot. I spoke to him a lot. From 1 to 11? No, from, no, no, no. This is after you found out who he was. Yeah, after that. Right, so before was. that time, It wasn't really, no I don't think my mother really wanted, I think it was a, I think it was like a mutual agreement between them two. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's this figure who he is, so he don't want nothing happening mm -hmm. to his kid or mm -hmm. his family or nothing like that. So he's trying to keep everything yeah. under, who, if you know, you know type of thing. And my mother was even more paranoid than he was, so that's why she had me in school in Manhattan, away from all of the noise. Because they, you know, parents' job is to protect, so that's what they were doing. You know, the Bible speaks on the sins of a father. Um, he passed down to his son. What do you, have you experienced this? Is this something that you feel like was a burden for you growing up, or is this something that, talk to me. I don't, I don't really feel like it was a burden. I mean, you're gonna have to experience stuff good and bad in your life so but everything in life is a gift and a curse but i don't really feel like i've experienced no crazy nothing crazy no repercussions of him but i know how to move though like i learned i taught myself at a at an early age on how to move that's for me being around dudes that was in their 40s when i was a teenager like i always hung around the older people so i know how to move so i never put myself in no position for no crazy shit to happen what's your mother like my mother's a g She's a G. Like, everybody think that I'm how I am because of him, but it's really my mother. Like, she's really different. Like, hustler, smart, intuitive, observant. Yeah, like, my mother was... I mean, look, he was with her for mad years, so somebody like him is only going to be with somebody that's the female version of him. You get what I'm saying? So they was a, a good match. So if he was with her, then she had to, you know, be, be something. How did he... My uncle on my mom's side, my uncle Bing, was working with my pops. So it was like my pops would come to the crib. He would see my my uncle's sisters and word like. And it wasn't off limits, like yo, bro. I mean, <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with I you. Mean, I, I mean, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, so this this culture was it? What was the disposition in your mom when she is telling you? If you could remember, like, if she when she's telling you, like, who your father was and what he meant to the culture. She never really gave me that perspective, though. Okay. It was more of a, like, it was more like her perspective, not the street perspective. So she would tell me, like, she didn't really open the book. She told me what I asked and what I needed to know. My mother's not going to waste her words. So she told me what I asked. Okay, yeah, this is your father. This is what he did. This is what he was into. This is where he's at. This is where his family is. This is, like... She broke what I needed to know down. All the other theatrics and all the other drum, dramatized things I got from his friends, I got from other people, I got from his peers, I got from other family members. But my mother kept it short, sweet, and simple. So, Have you ever wanted to turn to a life of crime? Yeah. Hell yeah. I definitely did. Around late high school years, I definitely wanted to do that. Because it was exciting. You were talking about a kid that was on the straight path his whole entire life, played sports, never did nothing to learn that his father was this person and then want him to like, I seen all the love he was getting. Everybody revered him. It was so much, it was so much like, he was like- It's infectious. He was like Diddy to the to the streets. You feel me? He was like Nas. He was like how, you see how people love Nas and how they love Jay-Z, like that's who he was. So when I'm seeing it as a kid, all the love he's getting, I'm like, yo, like I want that too. like. I need to do some shit to, to make me get that love. But that was short lived though. Why is like, that? I'm a Virgo, so I'm very, I'm on point. And I see like, if it's a road that I'm that I'm on my way down, I know that at the end of the road, is not what I want, yeah, I'm gonna pivot quick. 
It's crazy. Um, there was there was a point in time where I wanted to be like a scammer, so I, I had put my money in to do like this this one scam, and that same day I got locked up mm. for mistaken identity. Mm. So, it be signs. The universe be giving you signs. You can either choose to listen or take heed or or or, or, or avoid it. A crime I never committed, but you know, it's just that one thing I said. All right, let me just get, let me just to stop. I right, I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. That's smart man. <laughs> smart man. Um, what is your relationship with the streets? If there is one, I don't, I don't really. Right now, at the point I'm, I'm at right now in my life, I don't like. I love, I love certain things about it, but I also hate certain things about it, like. The ratting, the fake love, the, 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 the animosity, the, the weird looks you get, like all that people be watching your page but don't be liking nothing. Because mm-hmm. the streets, sometimes it correlates to social media. Sometimes shit that happened in the street is broadcasted on social Like that's mm-hmm. the era that I'm from, mm-hmm. is social media. And I don't like that those two things, the, the, the social media and the streets, are combined now. Mm. So when two things like that, like when you doing street activity on social media, like that's when you gotta take a step back. Like whoa, it ain't the streets no more. When you you spoke about ratting, what what what's your thoughts on that? I hate that. That's the worst thing you could be in the world. That's and that's uni- a universal thing with every race. Mm. The worst thing you can be is a rat. Mm-hmm. Nobody like. I, I feel like there's so many stipulations with ratting now. You know what I'm saying? Um, not to highlight gunner situation, but in like a gunner situation, I hear many people say, well, you know, if young thug is okay with what gunner did, sometimes you got to take a plea and admit to some stuff and this, this, that, and the third. So it's not really considered ratting. People you- that have never been in that situation shouldn't even comment on it. And that's something that in, that's in today's world where a person that works at Home Depot think that they can comment on some shit that happened in the industry or the street. You're not in either one of those realms. Mm. Shut up. I hate that everybody has a voice. Mm. That's one of my pet peeves, that everybody feels like they can talk on everything. Watch and see how it unfolds and just be a viewer. You don't have to be a, a spectator. Mm. Like, just be, just shut up and just see what happens. Don't give your opinion because you know nothing about it. But as far as that situation, like, it's just, it's just nasty, bro. And I don't want to hold that just to Gunner because uh, everybody does it. Mm. It's more than just Gunner. Gunner just what's happening right now. Mm. But it's a whole... There's a whole fucking dictionary of people that have done what he did. Mm-hmm. So and the people you probably look up to and bump their music and you know do, do all those things. I oh. never looked up to no rapper though. Hmm. I, I never looked up to no rapper because I didn't have to. The person that I looked up to was a real person that was actually doing real shit. Like who? Chaz. Chaz Williams. Oh, super OG. People know what I'm talking about. Black hand Chaz. Yeah, that's what the person I looked up to. And was this on a personal level, or was yeah, this... definitely. He was like one of my mentors. He was the OG that was one of my mentors. So definitely, he was. He's a he's older than my pops. Like he he had an episode on American Gangster too. Like he was a bank robber. He was a person that was robbing. That's not why I looked up to him, but just to give you a little backstory, I'm like he was in jail. He would get out on work release and go rob a bank and then go back to jail. Like he was different. Like really different. Why would you look up to him? Because he just was so smart. Like, I got the old version of him. I didn't get that version of him, mm. but he was too, like, that, he just, mm. he just was so smart, man. Like, I always, he had so much structure. I always speak to that because people feel like the person that someone was is the person that they are now or who they always That's a mantra. Be. And it's like. When you do something bad, they always going to hold you to that, what you did. Oh, my so you can God. Do that, so you can, you can. You can have 17 albums that flopped, and then you can have an album that won you five Grammys, but they're only going to talk about those 17 albums that flopped. They ain't going to talk about those that album that you got those Grammys for. They, people love negativity, man. That's Was Chaz a father figure to you? Yeah, absolutely. In your life? Absolutely. 100%. Because I didn't have no father figure. You get what I'm saying? All the men in my family was in jail. Uncles, cousins, pops, like on both sides. Both sides of both sides of the game. Both sides of my family was the men was was away. They started coming home like once I hit my teenage years and my uncles and every my cousins. They all but they was all in they was entrenched in the street life. When you're watching these documentaries and these things on the Supreme Team, what do you feel? Like what is that? <laughs> that shit is fire looking at it. Mm-hmm. Like seeing Nas do a documentary on your dad, like that's 
fire, bro. Like, but it's not nothing I didn't know already. Like ninety seven percent of the shit that's in the documentary I knew already. Mm. But just to see it come to life is fire. Like a motion picture, a documentary, a movie. Like hearing him and my cousin talk on the phone. Like that shit giving me goosebumps when you listen to that. Like crazy, bro. Wow. Breathtaking. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I would think so. Yeah. And to know that you come from the loin of. You know, someone that is so revered. And then everybody called me friends, associates, people out there like, yo, like, me at the premiere, me being on the red carpet at the premiere with Steve Lobel and, like, different people, like, that shit is exciting, bro. Like, the lifestyle is just a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I love, I love, I love it. Okay. I wouldn't want to be nobody else's son. It, I'm perfect how I am. It's interesting because you see the fathers, these gangsters, right, and... Their lives are just so glamorized from American TV and documentaries and things like that, that you see their second generation almost become stars mm -hmm. off of... Off what they did. Off what they did. But mind you, they lived a life of crime, mm -hmm. running and, 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 and hiding and spending money and dealing and survival, real survival, life or death situations yeah. for you to now live a life of... Glamour. Living glamour. Crazy, it's crazy, but that's the sacrifices, I guess. Like, they do shit so you don't have to do it. Oh, uh, were you involved in the uh, Supreme uh, Team documentary, or you know what? It, was it, Nas? Did Nas reach out? Like, it's a crazy story. It's a crazy backstory, and I never told nobody this on camera before. Mm -hmm. So, that story was supposed to just be about Prince, my cousin. Like Nas and Prince was in communication for the longest, so and, they was. And doing Prince, it. so everyone knows the understudy of your father. His nephew, but he was they only a year apart. So if we talk about the chain of commands. There was, was Supreme, then it was Prince. Got you. And then it was the other thousands of people that they had. It was a thousand people, but Prince was the the guy. Okay. And so Nas and Prince was in communication. The documentary was about him, so. I was working on a, one of my projects, projects that I was doing behind the scenes, and the guy I was talking to, we don't got against names, but I was talking to one of the producers on the on the doc. Mm -hmm. So he hit me one day. He's like, "Yo, has anybody ever did anything about your father? Like your any story?" I'm like, "Nah, not besides American Gangster." He's like, "Yo, can you get me in contact with your father?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got you. I put him in. Uh, you feel me? I'm not a hater. I'm a if somebody come to me trying to put my father in a situation, I'm a, I'm always gonna do it. I don't know if he would do that for me." Talking about my father, I don't know if it would be reciprocated, but I put that dude, and that's how my father became a part of the documentary, because mm. I put the call through to him from the, the producer that called me, and then they just like, I didn't get no credit for it, I didn't get no consultant, I didn't get, I wasn't, none of that, like, I'm like, damn, like, but that was the eye opener for me that this is how the industry works, so if you don't lay out what you want and your demands first, they just go on sweep you under the rug. One, yeah. two, or you could look at it, I'm an optimist, right? Or you could look at it like I was at the red carpet. Or I could look at it like I was at the screening. Or I could make these connections with these people in real life. They did some bullshit. I agree. Yeah, and this is bullshit. the thing. It's like you turn the bullshit into a blessing for yourself. Yeah. Because no matter what, you're going to run into bullshit. Mm -hmm. What you do with it will determine your yeah, next step. You know what I'm saying? You can choose to be like... Oh, no, they did some bullshit, man. Fuck them people to die. But I'm, I don't even hold that sentiment towards them. Because I'm yeah. just happy that it, it happened how it happened. And it was great. It turned out great. Yep. So I don't hold any ill will to them. Right. What they did was some bullshit. And I'm going to tell them, yo, you did some bullshit. For sure. But, I mean, y'all did a good job. Congratulations. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing documentary. I think it was one of the best documentaries that, like, about street life ever. I think we're waiting for that show. That, the show that or movie, the show or that re the that re everything, that recreation, because that's the times that we're living in. I like documentaries, but I'm a journalist. Jamie Foxx playing my father in the movie. Huh? They doing a the movie, and Jamie Foxx is playing my father. Michael B. Jordan is gonna play Prince. This is happening. Yeah, Irv. Gotti. Yeah. We have a lot to get to. A lot. <laughs> a lot. We, I feel like we've been talking for an hour already. We only 15 minutes in. Well, okay. So, let's backtrack a little bit. Mm. So you 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 the Showtime look. This happens. You, you you're talking to your father. This the, the relationship seems a bit estranged. It seems a bit. You you it feels like there's a tension there. Um, would I be assuming it at that, or would you say that there's a tension between? No, you I don't really feel like it's a tension. Mm. I just feel like 
a dad is going to be a dad, mm-hmm. right? And a son is going to be a son. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, like, it might be, take away drug dealer, take away me being who I am. Just a risk this, talking about a regular dad, a regular father and son. It comes to some point in time in the son's life where he's going to want to do what he wants to do because that's just every kid. And the father is trying to tell him, no, don't do this. I did that already. Come over here. But as a kid, I'm going to be like, no, I'm, well, let me go over here and see what I want to go see and whatever happens, myself. happens. Yep. But so it's frustrating for a father to watch his son go down a road that he's already been down. And he's trying to tell him to go in another direction. And, and what, his son is not listening. And what direction was he telling you to go? No, I'm not. It's not even necessarily a direction. He's just trying to give me jewels and, and like, but you can't talk to my. You, they gotta it go. Experience I gotta experience it. that for myself. Like, don't tell me the stove is hot because I'm gonna go touch that shit anyway. I want to get burned so I can know that it's hot. When's the so, when's the last time you spoke to your father? Um, like three months ago, like two three months ago. And what was that conversation like? It was brief. It was brief. He heard that I went to go uh, see Prince on a visit, so he was just like, "Yo, how did it go?" Like. What's been going on, blah, blah, blah. It was brief because he don't really call like that. Like, his jail always is on lockdown. He's in one of the worst jails. Like, his jail is always on lockdown. That shit is... Being in a, a, a maximum prison is bad, bro. Like, I I can't wait till him and Prince get out because that shit is like somebody getting killed every day in the prison, bro. Yeah, I mean... So these, he's always on lockdown. These are, these are people who... Probably have nothing. To... They got terrorists in the prisons with them, yeah. like people that blew up buildings and shit like that. Like those people, the public enemies number number one is in those prisons, bro. His experience in prison. Uh, do, you, do you ever talk to him about? about no. Nah. See, it's, see the shit that people think that I would talk to him about. I don't even talk to him about like all the shit with him and Fifty and like the industry shit and like we don't talk about that because he wants to be Kenneth. He doesn't want to be Prem. I'm, I'm not preem to you. I'm your father. Like, mm. you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but on the uh, outside, I automatically think, yo, your father didn't even tell you no ill stories. Like, nah, he, we don't talk about that. He's a dad. I'm a son. Like, we're not talking about preem. Are there other siblings? Yeah. Hell yeah. He's a rock star, bro. Mm. I never heard of a rock star having one kid. How many are you? I mean, me personally, I only know about two. But I heard that it's a whole bunch. I mean, I never got any confirmation. We don't talk about that. I gotta focus on my relationship with him. Right. He's not that. He's a military person. Like my grandfather was in the military. He's a structured military person. So he's not gonna appreciate me stepping out of bounds as a kid to him, as his son, asking him about. Nigga, don't ask me about none of that. Shut up and listen. And what I choose to tell you is what the information you're gonna get. Don't ask me nothing. That's the type of person he is. From all the research that I've done. It seems like he was the brains of the operation. He was more like the intellect. But between him and Prince, yeah, I wouldn't say that because they both Virgos. So as a Virgo, you always gonna be analytical. You always gonna be observing. I, I'm so I don't really. I'm not a real science person. No, but I'm like I'm. Yeah, really, I don't really I'm, know. I'm like I go in depth with that that science. Okay. Shit. Yeah. But we all Virgos, so okay. Prince could have been the brains too, but Prince, he just a he a beast. But we not even gonna get into that. My man trying to come home, so. You feel me? He, he's doing the right path. He's helping the youth. He's, you know, doing stuff in the community. He's giving back. He's doing documentaries on the positive time. So, right. I mean, but back at the stuff that happened in the past, I feel like, yeah, you can consider Prem being the brains of the operation. They have life in, in jail. Right? Yeah, they both got life. I think Prince had six or seven life sentences, and I think Prem had two. But I think Prince beat six of them. So he's only fighting one more, and he put his papers in because they changed so many laws. Prince never got convicted of murders, so he's only he been in jail thirty two years of drugs, which is like unheard of. So they put in a couple, like they put in the motions and all that stuff because they changed like seven. I think it's like course, yeah. the second the second step act. I mm-hmm. think that's the law. Yeah, where you can't be in jail a certain amount of time for drugs. Right. So he Prince, my my cousin is coming home. Wow. Yeah, so that's gonna be like a that's gonna be a whole nother movie in itself. Just him touching the ground outside after being incarcerated for thirty two years. I'm twenty seven. He's been in jail thirty two years, but that's crazy. What is it like with these figures? These figures are just so well known. Notorious. But yes, very notorious. And when we're talking about these people, we're talking about your family. You know what I'm saying? Is that oh that's cousin so and so, that's my uncle, or this is 
my my brother or my yeah. father. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and pe- people have they have documentaries about people that were third, fourth, fifth, sixth in command, mm-hmm. and like all that third, fourth, fifth, sixth in command. You know all of them. Oh, he probably used to babysit. Or this one, you know, or Chaz, Chaz, yeah, he, he put me on the game. He taught me how to tie my shoes and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? What, what's what's that like for you? <laughs> I mean, it's regular. Like, I've been dealing with it for so long. It's like second nature to me. It's regular. Like, these people is really my family. So I don't necessarily, like, I know and I'm aware of who they are, but I don't look at them like that. Like, they're just regular people. What was your reputation in school? A fly-ass, smart-ass class clown. I was mad smart, bro, but I just loved being funny. Like, I always was the funny dude. I always was, like, I just was the entertainment, bro. Like, I always been the, the a good person to be around. People always flock, naturally just flock. Before they even know who my father was, they always flocked to me. Like, I just was, like, I've always been lit, bro. For lack of a better term, I've always been lit. Well, what would you say if people say, oh, he's clout chasing, or he's an attention whore, or... Um, he, 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 he likes to prank. He's a, like... How can you chase clout if you are clout? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People say, I'm chasing clout, but they mention me. So, am I, as a man, take away everything. As a man, am I not supposed to address somebody when they come after me? Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to tuck my tail and walk away. It mm-hmm. just so happened that all of my interactions is, is broadcasted. Mm-hmm. So, it looks like I'm always into something. Mm-hmm. But I'm not really always into something. I just, ha- I feel like, as a man, I'm going to address you if you address me. So if your father wasn't the head honcho in one of the biggest organized crime bosses, what do you think he would be doing? And that question is twofold because I'm going to ask you as well. Mm-hmm. If you, you, you were smart. You were the smart kid in class. You, mm-hmm. were, you were the one that, you know, you knew the answers and mm-hmm. you just wanted to apply yourself to, you know, you wanted to be the class clown. What would you be doing if... I wasn't cream, son. What would I be doing? And what would he have? What, what I think what he would have been doing, he probably would have been like a a, a movie director or a boxer, because he, he loved boxing. So he probably would have been a boxer, or he probably would have been a movie. But whatever he would have been doing, he would have been in charge, because that's he wants to. He got. He has to be in charge. Like he can't. You feel me? And me, if I wasn't his son, I probably would have been a baseball player. Like I played baseball my whole entire life. So I think that I probably would have been like a famous ass, rich ass baseball player right now. What are you going to be now? That's to be determined. Like, there's so much going on, like, so many deals on the table, so many different avenues I can go down. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. That's definitely a fact. Like, I'm, I just got a hustler spirit. Like, I can sell water to a well. So, like, definitely entrepreneurship, definitely business, mogul. I like that. I love that word, mogul. Like, I feel like I'm going to be a mogul, you know, along those lines. 50 Cent. Hmm. In the beginning of the interview, you said that, you know, you can't see yourself supporting anything 50 Cent does. Why is that? Because I wouldn't, like, he's, he's a, he's an enemy. He's an enemy. Why would I support somebody that's trying to facilitate the demise of my family? Like, when you see him, stuff... Stuff has been 20 years removed, 25 years removed, but any chance he gets, he takes a shot at my father. Hmm. So, I would never support anything he does, because if I support him, that's like me not supporting my father. Hmm. So, when they draw that line in the sand, you got to pick which side you want, you got to stay on that side forever. Like, there's a lot of people that would play both sides. People that know Cream and 50, they play both sides. Mm -hmm. But they, I heard a, a saying once, if you play both sides, you're going to get shot by one of them. I, well, a man... Figuratively. A man, a, man who is, figuratively. a man who is friends with anyone is an enemy to himself. So I, I think it correlates. Um, you have a tattoo on your hand. Oh, yeah. That's, that's cream. If you want to show the camera... Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. The, y- your, your, father, your father is someone you look up to. Absolutely. Absolutely. If he wasn't my father, I would look up to him because he's a genius. This man was opening barbershops, laundromats, hair salons, doing movies, and like he just knew how to move. Like that's somebody to look up to. 
They said at some point he was making five hundred thousand dollars a day. I think I think it was a week. It might have been a week. Oh, it was a week. Sorry, forgive me. Uh, we'll, we'll correct that. A day, a week. That's still a lot of money. I don't care how much. It's yeah, five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand a year is good money. Every five years, it's a lot of money. You feel me? Um, five hundred thousand. Like that. It was a lot of fiends. That just goes to show me that it was a lot of fiends. I mean, cr- cr- I said a crack was like hookah. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's like your money falling out your pocket. Um, crack, 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 crack would be like, you, you know what I'm saying? Before people, let's say, let's say people were strung out on hookah and, you know, wobbling around on the street. People probably ain't know. It was just a new thing on the streets. You know, it started with cocaine. Cocaine was this rich drug. All the Hollywood people are doing it. Then they synthesized it and found a way to put it into, you know, make crack. Mm-hmm. And it was cheap and everybody get their hands on it. So, you know, yeah. They they talk about that block. I think it was the 150 block in Queens, yeah, and they said that it was like the black market for anything you needed, and that block was making millions and millions of dollars. And the workers, like the people on the bottom level, they if out of every thousand dollars they made, they probably were seeing five bucks from the thousand. Yeah, like all the money goes to the top dogs. You if you take five dollars for every thousand dollars you make. And it was still better than getting a job. And, and look at look at that. You make five that five dollars off every thousand, and it was still better than what you would make on a job. <laughs> Crazy. It probably ain't put no money away for you, yo. Mm-mm. I mean, but that the highlight of their career was in the eighties. I wasn't born to ninety five, mm. so like that, it was over. that. Yeah, that shit was over. Shit was over. And in these these businesses and and if he did put money away from me, I wouldn't tell anybody anyway. I know because you you sort of look down when I. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm trying to watch your body language here. You kind of look down when I ask you that. Um, what what's the what what is the deal with uh, Fifty Cent and Pop? Um, there's a lot of narratives out there. I don't want you to clear it, but. Yeah. Yeah, what I would be telling you is a narrative too. I feel like the only person that can really speak on that is my pops, and he touches on it a little bit in the Murder Inc. documentary. Mm-hmm. He touched on it a little bit, mm-hmm. but I feel like the problem has always been with Fifty with him. I never felt like my dad had a problem with him, because mm-hmm. my dad is he's one of those people that's gonna be in his world doing what he does, and Fifty growing up under that that brain, that supreme team thing, like Fifty grew up idolizing that. So when he started this imaginary war or beef with my father, he was like, I'm beefing with my, 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 the person I idolize. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he's infatuated with that. Mm-hmm. So when you're infatuated with something, it, it, you, that's, you eat, sleep, and shit that thing. You're a multi-millionaire, hundreds of million dollars, and you're still talking about somebody that's in jail for the rest of your life. That's infatuation. That's the definition of infatuation. Well, one might argue this person also changed your life. And, you know, if 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 the narratives are true, you know, there's some things that one may consider unforgivable. But when you're in the streets, though, yep. you're dealing with a whole bunch of different people that you might have an issue with. Mm-hmm. So that narrative that you're talking about, we don't have to spell it out, but that narrative that you're talking about, you don't know where that came from. If you... A, a bully, they call him, they used to say he was a bully. He was boxing dudes, he used to bully people, he was bigger than everybody. So you probably ruffled a lot of people's feathers. Mm. So you don't know where that came from. But you, as an entertainer, you're going to go with the best story, the best narrative. David, They had it in the newspaper, it was David versus Goliath. Mm. So that's what he, that's that, that's the narrative. What was what was David versus Goliath? Him versus Cream. It was, David, it was a David versus, versus Goliath story. Mm. This man tried to do this, you tried to do that, and you survived. So it was like, that's like a movie script. Mm. So he took that and catapulted that until who he is. So without Preen, it would be no him. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So how could we expect him to just let because it Because he's already him now. Yeah. The story is over. Yeah. You made, you did what you set out to do. Okay. Get rich or die trying. You right. got rich, so stop trying. Mm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm. Follow, your, follow your shit. You mm-hmm. got rich. Mm-hmm. So now stop trying. You shouldn't be still trying to do like, sh- like bro. The story's done. Mm-hmm. Close that chapter. Close that book. Let's move on to another book. From the documentaries, it seemed like your father was. 
I don't want to say the muscle, but he was he was um, he he wanted to change his life and maybe come into the entertainment uh, game. That's what he was doing. After he was doing movies, he oh. was like working with Urban. I mean, he's been murdering anything. He was having artists. He was dealing with uh, Hollywood. Like this is what he was doing. But what we was going, what we was talking about before the camera came on. Like once you are something that the media deems you as or depicts you as, you're always gonna be that. You're they're never gonna allow you to change something that that. You're always going to be... Right, but why Why didn't your father just go to Irv and say, give me that job, let me be that, let me be the wanted, CEO? He wanted to stay true to who he was. He's Kenneth Supreme McGriff. He's not president of Murder, Inc. He doesn't want to be president of Murder, Inc. He could have started his own label. He could have been the president of his own... He, Him and Irv was like this. But Irv met him as Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Irv didn't meet him as an intern or as an a &R or as, he met him, he, hey, I'm Supreme, how you doing? Oh, Supreme, yeah, like, you get what I'm saying? What if he dies on these streets? What if he goes to jail on these streets? He's Supreme McGriff, on his tombstone, he's going to say Supreme McGriff. When he's in jail, he's Supreme McGriff. He's going to be true yeah. to who he is no matter what. Right. They, they, was, they was giving him the death penalty. They wanted to give him the, 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 the needle. Yeah, lethal injection. This man didn't tell him nobody. He could have told about old shit, he could have tried to snake or slither his way out of something. He stood true to, he was willing to die for his name and for who he was. Hmm. You never gonna find nothing like that before. What do you think about that? That's different, bro. That's greatness. That's like Jordan, nigga. Jordan is gonna be Jordan no matter where he's at. He's never gonna stop being Jordan. Jordan hasn't played in the league in 25 years. He's still Jordan. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's different, bro. That level of commitment is different, bro. They was going to give him the needle. <laughs> the, the, the narrative is, um, your father's dealing with uh, Murder, Inc. at the time. Ja Rule gets uh, robbed mm -hmm. for a chain. Mm -hmm. Sees 50 Cent in the club with the guy who robbed him for the chain. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent then tries to say what up to Ja Rule. Ja Rule oh, yeah. doesn't want to die. Yeah. Because he saw him with the guy that robbed him. Mm -hmm. Ja goes see your pops. He's like, yo. And get the chain back. Just like that. Your pops get the chain back. Tries to talk 50 off the ledge. Help. Hold it down. We did the street shit already. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to. I think the real reason that 50 and Ja had a thing is because... 50 was like, okay, you from Queens, I'm from Queens. There's only enough room for one of us to be the best and the biggest in Queens. The chain shit was a small fraction of the the, the thing. You get what I'm saying? It's not enough. You ever heard that saying, there's not enough room for both of us? Of course. Of that's of course. How, that's 50's mentality. Like he, 50's a reader. He's in, like, he read the 48 Laws of Power like that, so he knows, like, I got to be the conqueror. I got to be the best. Um. And Ja Rule was number one at the time. Yeah. So he's like, I'm not going to let this nigga from Hollis... Be better than the nigga from Southside. Hollis and Southside. Yeah, the the things. chain was just a catalyst. It was just that a motivator. Was, yeah. It was yeah. just the the thing that make me have a yeah. reason. Yeah. You, you talk about you. But you're talking about a guy that made a record like How to Rob mm -hmm. to get into the game. Mm -hmm. You're talking about strategic. the strategic. He's strategic. You're talking about the street. Uh, the Quran record. The ghetto Quran. Yeah. The Ghetto Quran record. Um, that you know. You you could hear almost. As someone who studies music, but you can hear he's not just talking about events and people that, you know what I'm saying, he he, he looked up to these these guys. He looked 100%. up to these, you know, so even when you hear it, but you think about the age gap between your father, your father is what, 60, 60 years early, old? Early 60, early 60. These were the OGs. These were the people that he was looking up to coming up. Absolutely. So you hear those kinds of records. It was like... He idolized them. These two weren't even... In the same class. Exactly. It's like the senior beefing with the, you know, freshman. and he's not, I'm not beefing with the freshman. Um, it's what I would think about in my mind. That's a great analogy. Right. So, gets the chain back, tells him, yo, calm down. It ain't like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you, but. He's hard-headed. 50's a person who's also, like Cream, he's going to stay true to what he wants to do and who he is. He's that same way. So if he has his mind made up on doing something, he's going to see that all the way through. Right. He doesn't care about the repercussions. Okay. Yeah. 
and that's then that's kind of how I am too. Oh, I feel like that's like in our DNA bloodline. No pun intended. <laughs> and then things escalate, and whatever happens, happens, mm-hmm. and here we are. Mm-hmm. Do you sort of feel like you got the short end of the stick? Do you feel like fifty one in that regard? Um, Do you feel like we? You, you know, nah, I don't feel like he won. I don't feel like I don't. I don't feel like it was a winner because something happened to him. Something happened to all parties involved. Mm. It was a trial. It was a. The only reason it looks to the world like Fifty defeated Murder Inc. because Murder Inc. was going through a trial. Murder. It was so much shit going on with them. And it was like perfect. It was like the perfect storm, the perfect rising for this guy. Like these people are going through turmoil as this guy is ascending. Mm. He's dealing with Dre. He's dealing with Eminem. He's got a machine behind him. So it's like the pendulum is is the the the, sh- the, the weight is shifting. So mm. these guys, everybody had their time. Mm. You think everybody got their karma? Yeah. Actually, I believe in karma. Absolutely. Yeah. So maybe they had whatever happened to them, and that was their karma. And then you feel me, like. Because let's be real. Outside of the things that we glamorize, your father was notorious. Mm -hmm. He was known for a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. Gangsters are revered so much in the community, um, partially because of all that they do for the community. Mm -hmm. But the dichotomy or sort of like the oxymoron of it all. They destroy it and they they build it back up at the same time, simultaneously. Oxymoron to the T. But maybe they feel guilty about destroying it. That's why they give back. I mean, who knows? I'm not a drug dealer. I can't talk for them. But right. that's what I would think, though. Right. Or maybe they don't think like that. Maybe they feel like, you know, I was put in this situation. I grew up in poverty. I'm in poverty. How do I escape poverty? Oh, this is an easy way to make money, to escape. Let me do this. Like, you know, sometimes you got to be selfish. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, people are selfish in life. We're humans. Mm. We're not robots. We're not programmed to just be one way forever. Well, yeah, the core of every human being is self-preservation. Yeah. And that's, he's big on that, self-preservation. The infamous picture. I'm sorry, I got to bring it up. Yeah. The infamous picture. The picture that broke the internet. Mm-hmm. What was that about? Well, when two people are in the media, and the media knows these two people, these two major figures from clashing, and then their offsprings are seen together in any capacity, it's like, yo, what the fuck is this? What does that picture represent to you? Twofold. What does it represent to you? And what did I intend it to represent? Okay. You can go there with it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, what does it represent to everyone else? Mm -hmm. And what does it represent to you? Well, it represents... Like, if you weren't you and you were looking at that, and at that moment, boom. Yeah. And then, what did it actually mean to you? Well, people looked at that shit as, like, I was trolling 50. Mm. That's what people looked at it as. That's why I got so big. And I feel like 50 also looked at it like that, too. Mm. That's why he wrote that comment, like, yo, both of these niggas get hit by a bus, I wouldn't lose no sleep. Was that in the book? No, no, that's what he wrote under the picture. Oh. He wrote that comment under the picture on the page that posted the picture. Mm. But he spoke about it in his book. Also, that shit hit a nerve for him, bro. Like, that shit was like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm. He thought me and his son orchestrated and planned it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how we got in that situation. Mm. Neither one of us planned that shit. Another third party got us together. Me not knowing who he was, him not knowing who I was. We was 18 years old, 19 years old. We didn't know who each other was. Maybe we was 20. I remember. But maybe 19, 20. I don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. So the people around us got us together, took the picture, and then it became what it became. Mm. But you see how when you end the spotlight or you end the, 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 this world, something small can turn into a mountain overnight. What was it like waking up, I guess, seeing your phone? And- My boy called me 4 o'clock in the morning, like, nigga, get up. Why the fuck are you on ball alert? And then it went from ball alert to the shade room to TMZ to, like, world news to, like, every blog site to everything. And I'm like, oh, shit. This nigga, nigga, let the games begin. Wow. Yeah. But for the outside looking in, this is one of the biggest rappers to ever sell any kind of record. Mm-hmm. 
mixed with one of the biggest crime bosses in the history of especially black culture. I think he's the biggest in black culture, but that's a story for another day. I'm gonna ask you about that. And you have their sons together. Arch enemies kids together. With the idea that one tried to kill the other. Mm -hmm. That's like a soap opera. That's a movie, a soap opera, and like some family shit all in one. Because there's an old bunch of rumors and shit about us being related and 50 being my brother. And like that shit is like a fucking soap opera, bro. Like when you really just take a step back and look at that shit all of, that shit is a soap opera. Not your intention. Of the picture? Right. I didn't really even have any intention on posting the picture, but once I seen how it was going, I just went with it. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know that shit was going to do that. Like I had no inkling that that shit was going to go that colossal, but... Okay, so this is what y'all want to see? Okay, well, I'm going to just go with it. And what are your feelings toward Marquise? I don't like him at all. I don't like nothing about him. I don't like how he moves. I don't like his smile. I don't like how he talk. I don't like how he dresses. I don't like nothing about that kid. Is this a... Is this yes, a per personal. Yeah, I don't like him. And because all of this shit that happened after that was like crazy in one in one aspect and then like we have been opportunities have been presented to me and him to do a whole bunch of different shit and I'm I respect the fact that you don't want to keep this shit going between me and you but like don't act like I was a fan mm. trying to bro I didn't I, what what do you do mm -hmm. you're not a rapper you're not mm -hmm. I don't fucking know you nigga I'm like I got you back lit Mm -hmm. The picture is what got you back lit. Nigga, niggas wasn't talking about you. Mm -hmm. I got you lit. Thank me. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean... None of it None of it is sort of like, hmm, proverbial. Is it like like biblical? Like, because your father beefed with my father, like, I got to beef with you. Nah, hell not, no. Not even a little Because you a good kid. Right. Like, we both can be looked at as good, good kids. kids. Cause I, we both, we wasn't in the streets. We both went to private school. We both, you know, played sports, shit like that. So we, we ain't no, we ain't gonna kill each other, nigga. I ain't gonna kill you, and you damn sure not gonna kill me. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it could never be the same thing as him, what my father and his father had going on. It could never be that. Right. Yeah, it could never. It can never be. Not even, not even a, a, a little bit. Not even three percent of that. Right. Cause they, they was, they was, it's, it's different errors. Right. And like he's not gonna, he's not gonna kill a fly. You get what I'm saying? Like, he don't even want to fight. Like, we had an offer to fight. He didn't even want to do that. Niggas wanted to pay us for a fight. He didn't, like... I'm, and I'm cool with that. Not having no... But don't... What was it back? <laughs> they was going to give us 50000 a piece. Just the, just for the three rounds. Oh, boxing. Like a celebrity boxing match. Turn it down. But I'm cool with that. I'm getting money. Yeah. You not getting money. You one that's selling hookah. You a hookah boy. I'm getting money how I'm getting money. You feel me? But I brought an opportunity to you. Right. And you turn it down. I'm not mad at that. Cool. That's your prerogative. You want to turn it down, I'm just going to be good regardless. But don't spin that shit like I'm chasing you down. I'm trying to be cool with you. Nigga, you're not my... You're not my... You ain't... Me and you is not the same caliber, bro. Me and you is not in the same caliber. Mm. I would never fuck with you. Like, you, me and you would have never been cool. We would have never hung out. None of that. You're not... You feel me? Like, you're different. Yeah. Um. This, this is... This is... This is a... Rats. Rats and greed. Who's greed? Everybody's greed. Everybody wants to be the boss. Everybody wants to be the number one. Everybody want to fuck this person, girl. Everybody want to do some snake shit. Like, when you dealing with a with a, with, with a group of people, it's always gonna crumble. Cause if you have ten people, it's always gonna be that one motherfucker that that that's not in line, or it's always gonna be that one person that's jealous of the boss, or. The, you can never, a, a group of people is never going to work long term. How long did that run last? Um, if I had to put a number on it, I would probably say seven years, six or seven years. It's like, it's like to live that kind of life, would I trade that for six, like six, six, six years? Six years training for life. So you, tr you trade it, and it's, it, essentially you traded six years to be on top. For life of imprisonment. Unless you rat it. If you rat it, you're good. Because hmm. you come home. You don't have to do no time. Hmm. So you really did six years 
and just kept it at that six years. But you also have to live your life for the rest of your life as a rat. But, I mean, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. In my perspective, that's a horrible thing. Because somebody calls you a rat and that's the worst thing you could be in the world, to me. But, you still get to be home with your family. You put somebody else away from their family. You got caught. And you took somebody else away from their family, but you get to be with your family. You a dirtbag. You know, that's the lowest shit you can do to somebody. Mm. Just own up to what you did. Take accountability. Nobody in this world wants to take accountability for shit. Mm. They always want to put it off on somebody else. They always want to... But that, that you're not a man if you can't take accountability. Mm. But, yeah. The fall of an empire is always going to come from somebody hating. Or a female. Most likely, it's going to come from a female, too. Because mm. this nigga might fuck this nigga, bitch, and... Oh, no, nigga, you can't fuck my bitch, nigga. I'm going to fuck your life up now. Anything I can do to fuck your life up, I'm going to do it because you fuck my bitch. But you, what type of nigga you? Your bitch is a hoe. Mm. So you really mad about your hoe being a hoe? Um, with, a, with, a, with a run like that, you look, you're a spitting image of your dad. Think so? I think you look just like him. See, everybody says that. I don't, I don't see it though. Do people call it, has anyone ever Everybody noticed? Everybody always says that shit, bro. But has anyone has anyone ever noticed you and say, yo, you look like Hell yeah. Really? Hell yeah. People that didn't know me, not like that. I would be in the city and this dude would be like, Yo, you look like this drug dealer nigga from Queens, yo. Like, is that your father? You lying. I tell you, bro, I don't lie, bro. That's crazy. I don't lie. That's I'm crazy. You. That's I was crazy. like 14, 15. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, you look like what the fuck? That's mm-hmm. scary. I, I, I used to live in um, down south, bro. Like, after I got into the public eye, people used to come up to me down south. Like, yo, like, you such and such, right? Mm-hmm. I'd be like, nah. You, I'm like, nigga, if I was that, why the fuck would I, I would play mm-hmm. mind games with them? Like, why would I be down here? Because mm-hmm. I ain't, you feel me? Like, you never know what a nigga's intention is. And I don't yeah. want to have to boom a nigga and be in jail. You feel me? Right. So I always try to, like, nah, that's not me. You bugging me, nigga. Hell no. Who is bigger, BMF or the Supreme Team? Me, personally, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to give you an analogy on that too, right? When you compare Kobe and Michael, they always say Kobe can never be better than Michael because he learned from Michael. Michael was first, right? Hmm. So if the Supreme Team was first, they, they was the biggest because the BMF came after them. So the, the, the student can never be bigger than the teacher. Hmm. Kobe is my favorite player. He, I think he's the best, but if you ask 20 other people, they're going to say he's, he can't be better than Jordan. Jordan, he learned everything from Jordan. Jordan was before him. Supreme Team was before BMF. So the Supreme Team is bigger. It was better. You get what I'm saying? Of course. Of course. Um, Tyson I'll... could never be better than Ali. Ali was first. <laughs> everything Tyson did, Ali did that shit. So how can he be better? He might have did it in greater fashion. But Ali already had did everything he did already. How do you know Mike Tyson? That's a long story, bro. But I um seen that he was going to be in New Jersey. And I'm like, yo, I got to meet this nigga. Right? But this is after I seen that he was an executive producer in my dad's documentary. Yeah, another documentary that's coming out about his trial. About my father's trial. Tyson is executive producing that. So... I seen a flyer that he was going to get this mall in Jersey. I'm like, yo, I got to run down on Mike. Like, I want to meet him. I didn't even want nothing from him. I just wanted to shake the nigga hand. Like, you feel me? I'm a boxing fan. So I, I, so he was doing, like, an autograph sign, and I seen him walking out. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, Mike. He turned around. You know, Tyson is aggressive. You feel me? Like, he from Brooklyn. He turned around like, who are you? I said, I'm Prem son. It's like the nigga froze like. Like, he froze for that split second, then he dapped me up, and he, like, embraced me. And then he walked away with his with his security and the, and the people, and he came back. He's like, yo, come here, man. Come on. Come with me. Wow. Then we chopped it up, like, after he would finish the autograph sign, we chopped it up in the back room. And then, like, we didn't exchange nothing, numbers or nothing. Like, I was cool with that encounter right there. Like, I'm good. Like, you feel me? I lived. And then he called my godfather. Maybe two days after, he like, yo, is he still in New York? Like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna chop it up. I wanna meet. I wanna talk to him. And Rob was back down south, so they called me on Facetime, and I was doing what I was doing, and I'm like, yo, like, this nigga's calling me on Facetime, bro. Like, that shit is like, this is wow. who's your, and who's your godfather? Spoon. Hey, is he? Was he, he was a part of that shit back? Not the Supreme Team, but he was 
Yeah, he was getting yeah. right back. He's in connected in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I see you with so many celebrities. I mean, it, it, does this come from? Yeah, absolutely. It comes from Cream. Absolutely. They absolutely. You just tapped in now. You, yeah. Everybody just, oh. That's the perks. That remember I told you it was a good side and a bad side? That's the perks of being, I would never meet none of these people if it wasn't for him. It's what? the olive branch. They extend the olive branch because of him. And I'm not one of those people that be like, no, I'm good on my own. Everything that I am is because of Cream. Coming up, is because of my father. Yeah, I mean it's like and my mother too. It's because of both yeah. of them, but yeah, well, of, I course, know celebrities of course, it's because of my of course, mother. of course. I can never not. It's like you get to live, credit. you get to live the life that he almost got because to. you can you can get respect for being somebody's son, but you'll never be them. No. So that respect that they have for him, it might be a fraction of it. Mm. They still respect me, but it'll be a whole different situation if he was home. What about the beef you inherit? I mean, like, what's your relationship with like a Tony Ayo or something like that? If there is one. I, nah, I, I don't got no. He's a. Oh my God. I don't even want to get into all that. That nigga's a cheerleader. Oh, I never for, see, yeah. I never seen nobody like that before in my life. Never. You would think he's talking about his father when he's talking about 50. Like, you see how I'm sitting here talking about my father? You would think that 50 was his father, the way he talks about 50. Oh, wow. Like, what are you doing, bro? I mean, one, one might argue, maybe like, this is OG, this is like somebody... They're that... the same age. He might be older than 50. If he's not older than 50, they're the same age. How is somebody the same age as you, your OG? Hmm. That's weird. I, I, as I was doing my research on Supreme Team, obviously, it, it was just a lot of figures that was like coming up, and it was just like, there was like an attempt on your father's life. Um, I, I believe Bimmy was somebody that was talking about um, sort of, it, it, it was an interview with Bimmy and it was like an interview that uh, somebody else did, Sauce Money maybe, or someone, I don't want, mm -hmm. don't misquote me, mm -hmm. um, but they had did an interview and they just basically said there was a temple in your father's life, he was with uh, E Money Bags and um, Oh no, he was with uh, Black Just. Black Just, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. It's so much. It's, it's so much. Barrier. It's so many different yeah. people. Yeah, so many different. Shit. Yeah. So. so my father was with Black Just, and they wanted to do something to him, and then Black Just wound up getting shot, and he passes away, and then yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. How do you feel about sort of those figures, you know, on like the Vlad TVs and spoken speaking about, you know? Uh, I never understood why. Like, I can understand why I'm talking about it, you feel me? Like, I'm from the generation of interviews, social media, shit like that, but I, I never understood why an older person... And he's your father. <laughs> yeah, and I, nigga, I could talk about my father if I want to. Like, that's my prerogative, you feel me? Mm -hmm. But I never really understood why people, like, in their late 40s or their 50s or their 60s would be on the internet talking about that. Mm -hmm. Because if you come from that era, you know, like, y'all niggas was avoiding the cameras and avoiding talking about situations and shit like that. So well, I don't understand. One of my biggest pet peeves is an old nigga trying to act like a young nigga. Hmm. Or an old nigga trying to be involved in young nigga shit. Hmm. The internet, interviews, social media is your young man's sport. Hmm. Old niggas always play the back. You get what I'm saying? You're a polarizing figure. Yeah. In my mind. Mm -hmm. Um. What's the deal with you and Queens Flip? I I, I saw um, like we were we were we were friends, mm. and then I feel like we both got caught up, our, whether it be our own egos, whether it be a, a a misguided sense of pride, but we both got let the internet consume our friendship, mm. and mm. we let the internet break us apart mm. and we let clicks and views mm. and all that shit take over and then which probably meant that we wasn't really friends in the beginning because you're not supposed to let the internet come between a brotherhood mm. that's how I look at it mm. so if you let the internet or you let other people come in between you you and your friend then it wasn't really a real friendship anyway you know how I look at it now I'm gonna be honest with you because I have situations that are similar to that. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know so much if the internet gets in the way or if people's way of life gets in the way. And I say way of life because this is how people eat. And when you take the food out of another man's mouth, mm -hmm. the gloves are off. Mm -hmm. And it's been like that since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So when you when we talk about the clicks, we're talking about revenue. Mm -hmm. When we talk about clickbait, when we, wait, me out. Okay. When we talk about being seen in the public eye and all this, that, and third, we're talking about how another man eats. So I could see how two figures could get into it over the internet because of what the internet represents outside of ego, pride, and let me prove that I am this person or who I am not. You know what I'm saying? That because I, when we talk about you know just those clicks and stuff, we talk about people trying to make money. But you, but you was getting clicks before my shit, mm -hmm. and you was gonna get clicks after that. Mm -hmm. So do you really need my clicks? You don't. You don't differentiate. That's the, that's the that's the downside of it. You don't. Would you talk about one of your close friends on the internet about something that he told you that was personal that he don't want to talk about? If you cross that line, then you a piece of shit. Personally, fuck the money. Are you like? It's about morals. Do you do? Do you sacrifice your morals for money? People do it all the time. Okay, and you a piece of shit. People that do that is a piece of shit. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Okay. If you sacrifice your morals and who you stand for and your friendships mm. for money, mm. you a piece of shit. That means you would sell your mother out. What would people say about you that don't like you? Well, a lot of people say shit about me that don't even know me. Mm -hmm. That's that. Let's start with that. Okay. Because how can you have an opinion of somebody you never even met them, never had an interaction with them, never spoke to them? You're just going based off what somebody else is saying, mm -hmm. which is childish. But people think I'm arrogant. People think that uh, I talk a lot of shit. People just think that I'm egotistical. People think I'm a narcissist. But that's cool because all of the great leaders of the world, all of the, the, the bosses, all of the emperors, they have all been associated with narcissists and ego people too. So if you're comparing me to emperors and leaders of the world, I'm okay with that. What do you want from all of this? Respect. Hmm. You feel like you don't get it? I feel like... I feel like it's... No, I don't feel like I get it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Where, where does that come from? Why is that? Because I feel like people want to be me. People want to be his son. People want the perks of being his son. People want to, people want to be chilling with Tyson, Wayne, Nas, and like they want my life. You don't know my life. You only see what I show you. But they want to be. They want. They want some type of. Cause you, when you watch someone like me and you know me, you feel like. Why does he get to like why 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 is he this? Why does he get to be in these I wouldn't be there. And you think everybody like that? You think 70, that's seventy percent of people. Seventy percent. Mm hmm I think I have some genuine friends. I do think I have some genuine friends. But being somebody's son that's so revered, so notorious, it brings envy. And even people that you love or that might love you, they can still become envious of you. What about the people that's not so privy to I love those people. People that don't know Freemans, I love being around those people. Hear, me, hear the question. Okay. What about the people that are not privy to who you are and still don't like you? I respect that. Like, you mean they don't know who I am, whose son I am, and don't like me? Mm -hmm. I don't even, I haven't even met anybody like that, though. Because mm. if you don't, if you don't come to me already prejudging me, you're going to love me. Because I'm the most caring, most lovingest nigga ever. Like, I will take off my, the sweater off my back in 30 degree weather if I see you shivering, nigga. I'll tell you to come, yo, pull up with me. Come do this with me. Come do that with me. Yo, let's go eat. Yo, I'm, I'm the, mo the most genuine person ever, bro. So if you don't come to me already prejudging me, you will love me. Does your dad try to prevent you, try to prevent you from speaking about his story? All the time. He hates that I do this shit. He hates that I do it. But I mean, I gotta live my life though. And I gotta own and be who I am. And that's part of. The same way he stayed true to his identity, I'm your son. I have to stay true to my identity. You get know what I'm saying? I don't like the hypocrisy in that. Because you wanna be who you are, but you don't want me to be who I am. Or you don't want me to be who I am on camera. 
but like, this is just what was in the cards for me. You feel me? Because I, I, my mother could have been with anybody. You feel me? There was a whole bunch of drug dealers that knew my uncle, but they wanted up being together. So I wanted up being his son. Like all this camera shit, all of the clout, all of the, the fame, all of the friends, all of the contacts, this shit was in the cards for me. Allow me to make a connection, mm -hmm. if I can, if it's even plausible. But when I see you and I see like a Marquise figure, right? Mm -hmm. Subsequently, I I see two kids mm -hmm. who need their father, mm -hmm. right? I agree. And when I think about that, I think about the fact that there's also a longing for both of you to have that relationship with your father, right? So when you said that the two of you are not at it at all because of your dads, it always seems to derive from that point right there because of his strange, uh, his hard relationship with his father and your hard relationship with your father, but y'all still are both protecting your father. Yeah. That's just a natural instinct. Naturally. That's natural. That's natural. You know what I mean? I feel like if y'all would really just like sit down and like... We probably have a lot in common. Probably, because you don't have, <laughs> because, because, because there's not many people like y'all Yeah. that have such notoriety because your fathers are who they are, mm -hmm. not just infamously, famously, but in the streets. He's not mature enough though. In the streets. Yeah. Maybe 50 wasn't who your father was in the streets, but 50 is known for being in the streets. I don't think so. Okay. I disagree. He's known for being a rapper. Nigga wasn't known for being, he wasn't moving no weight, nigga. He was a, a small fry. He was not known for being in the streets. You might be known for fighting, niggas. He wasn't known for getting bread like that. You, come on, stop it, bro. You were known for being encouraged. You know, well, the streets shot. can be looked at as different things. You don't have to be getting money in the streets to be in the streets. So what would you be known for in the streets then? A stick up kid. Touche. <laughs> um, do you have any regrets about your life as you live it day to day or any regrets on how you treated uh, situations maybe with your father or? No way. Okay. No way. You can't live with no regrets. You can't. Whatever you felt necessary in that moment where you did it, you felt that way for a reason. So if you did what you did, you got to live with it and can't have no regrets. What are we going to get out of this book that you're writing? Ooh. Ooh. A lot of people going to be mad. A lot of people going to be mad because I know shit about everybody, bro. Any name you can name that's involved in this situation or this story in any capacity, I know a lot of shit. And it's... It's impacted and it's affected me. So everybody that we spoke about in this interview is going to be mad. My father included. My father's going to be mad. This person's going to be mad. Family members going to be mad. Like, because I'm going to, this is, the, it's about my life through my lenses. So I'm going to say and speak how I want. No holds barred. I'm not holding nothing back. And I'm going to have no regrets about what I write. Hmm. This shit going to be deep, bro. If, if you could give us a little sneak, <laughs> trap an anonymous, a little exclusive, uh, give us an exclusive about you know maybe maybe something um, um, that 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 you know in your heart that you're gonna want to get off um, that we can look forward to reading about in your book. Paternity. I'm gonna just leave it like that. Paternity of a certain somebody. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. If you know, you know. The ladies. The ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Are you in a relationship or what? Yeah, I'm in a relationship. You are? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been in a relationship? How, how's that going for you? Is it? Um, love is a beautiful thing, man. I agree. Love is just a beautiful thing. But you also got to remember to love yourself first. 
don't never get lost in a relationship. That's my advice to people that's in a relationship. Don't ever lose who you are in a relationship. Because if that person leaves you, you will never be able to find yourself again. And then you're going to go down the spiral of depression and, and all this shit is going to happen. Then you're going to project those feelings on your future relationships and nothing will ever be the same. So my advice is to never lose yourself in a relationship. Even if you madly in love with this person, I don't feel like you should love that person more than you love yourself. Because if they decide to leave, then what? So, so, so it sounds like you're in a relationship, but not in a relationship. No, <laughs> I don't fuck no, with you. I'm not, I'm just, I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you. I'm just giving my relationship yeah. advice because I want to have a talk show about, like, a, I want to. I, I think I could be like a therapist, so I want to have my therapy sessions like filmed. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want to be a a a, a, a TV therapist, mm -hmm. like a. I don't know if you want to call Doctor Phil that, but like, um, Doc Doctor P two. How old are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. What is um. The twenty-seven year old version of yourself tell the seventeen year old version of yourself or the fifteen year old version of yourself. Slow down. Slow down. You're moving too quick. You're speeding. You're doing too much. Slow down. How does he respond back to you? Mind your fucking business. Don't tell me what to do, nigga. <laughs> if your father was here, sitting here across from you. Um, what's something that you would tell him? Well, I would ask him, do he, does he love me? That would be the first thing I would ask him. Do you love me? And then, after that, we would just have a conversation. But that would be the first thing I would ask him. What do you think his response would be? Of course I do. Yeah. You me, of course. I love myself, so of course I love you. Because I think I get the narcissism from him. Like, I think that's the trait that I got from him, not from my mother. You feel like your dad respects you? Not yet. Mm -mm. If I'm being honest, I don't think so. It's hard to gain somebody like his respect, though. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. Like, he's not, like, a regular person. Like, it's hard to gain somebody like his respect. But I know when I do obtain that, I feel like that's going to be like liberating for me. Because I feel like all of this is just somebody, or just a son looking for his dad's respect and his dad's honor. And to be like, yo, look at what my son did. Like, I think like subconsciously, that's really what I want. Him to be like, yo, look at what my son did. Not the world. Not the people on the Instagram. Not the people in social media. Not the people on Twitter. You know, I know we spoke earlier and you said, you know, that was, you want the respect of your father, you know, because it means something. That's the first person you want to impress, you know, well, rest in peace. My, my dad passed uh, three, four years ago, but I wrote in my book, you know, your father's the first person you, you want to say, you know, I'm proud of you, you did that. You know what I mean? And man. I, I thank you for being vulnerable about that because, you know, that might not be always an easy thing to say, you know, black man to black man, you know, mm -hmm. but for sure. Yeah, you got kids? That's real shit. You got kids? Yeah, two boys. Wow. Um, how old? Um, one is turning seven in August and one is turning six in June. They 10 months apart. And what's your... different moms. I know that's just, yeah. What's your relationship like? Uh, it's beautiful. I feel like I'm the best father in the universe. Because I know what I lacked. I know what I wanted. So I always said, whether I had a daughter or son, whatever, like I'm going to be the best father. Because I know what I want. I know what I yearned for. I know what I needed. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So mm. I always want I want them, no matter what happens in their life, from what age, whenever, like I want them to be able to call me or ask me anything. And I'm always going to keep it told with them. Like, I'm going to prepare them for the world. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I had to learn a lot of shit. Like, I had mentors and I had guidance a little bit. But I still had to learn a lot of shit because I didn't have nobody I could call, like, at the drop of a dime. Because the people, the, my mentors, they had their kids. They had to, you get what I'm saying? They had to worry about their kids first. So I never had that, you get what I'm saying? So for them, 
they, I don't want them to have to go through nobody else. I want to have them be able to be like, yo, Pops, like, how do I navigate this? And I can walk you through it. I'm not going to hold your hand, but I can give you the the, the, the tools, and you're going to have to figure out how to work the tools. But I'm going to give you the toolbox. The tools is in there, but you're going to have to, you feel me? Because mm-hmm. I got to make you into a man. You got to learn how to work the tools on your own. That's how you become a man. This hoodie you have on. Yeah. Want to see it? Fire, right? I, I love it. It's kind of where I got the Travel Anonymous logo from. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, with the. You seen my shit and you did that? No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> you really are a narcissist. <laughs> 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 no, but um, the, the Supreme, it was like a really big thing at the time. And, you know, I just thought it would be cool. And, you know, I had my guy uh, put this together. But I see um, you, you sell those. And, yeah. And there's that to like commemorate your dad. Absolutely. To... Cause that's where they got the name from. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, they, the company wasn't founded until '94. The Supreme Team, Mer- the, I mean, the Supreme Company of Stable, they they wasn't they didn't the inception was in '94. So, mm-hmm. and it was based out of New York. So, <laughs> that's a no brainer. Put two and two together. Yeah. And they never reached out. Nah, but I'm I'm my. My goal, one of my goals that I wrote down on my vision board for 2023 is for me to have a collab with them. Mm. Cause I feel like, why the fuck not? Maybe this would be the start of it. Yeah. Uh, this is Traveling Anonymous. My name is Chris Styles. Let's get it.